those protests come at the beginning of what Jews call Passover. It is an important holiday. Joining us now to talk about the tensions over the conflict in the Middle East, how it changes Passover celebrations this year, especially because most people everywhere are on the same side of this question, the side of peace. Our guest is Rabbi Mark Gelman. And Mark, co-founder of the God Squad, a longtime friend of this station and of ABC News, and we, we thank you for joining us. Happy holidays and great to see you. Well, it's a, it's a joy to be with you and to everyone who understands what I'm about to say, a Zisan Pesach, a sweet Passover. It's what we want, as, no question about it. Um, l let me start by asking, before yeah. we de you know, dig into the weeds of all this, let's start by asking what the significance of Passover is. And I, let me just say it to start it from my position, um, and you're the scholar, <laughs> I'm not. Um, I, I think it's the most important of Jewish holidays, and I know a lot of people will say, no, no, it couldn't be, couldn't be. But I think it is because it deals with something that the world can recognize and embrace, and that is the heralding of freedom. and. Giving, getting rid of slavery and, and what to do when people are oppressed. And this was the Jews' way of getting all that. And they want it, we hope, for everyone else in the world. And that's why I think it's the most important to me anyway. Well, as your rabbi, I say you're right. And you're right for a couple of reasons. The first is that you don't need a synagogue. And I love synagogues, and I've worked for 50 years as a rabbi and at Temple Beth Torah out on Long Island. But... The truth of the matter is, Passover is celebrated, the Seder meal is celebrated at home, and it, it strengthens family bonds, and it establishes the idea that we bring God into our lives, not just in some building that we're in a couple of days a year, but in our home where we enter and live together. So it's also, I think, the most important holiday because it has an idea about freedom that we forget, which is that freedom isn't a one-time thing. It isn't, okay, the Jews got out of Egypt and that was fine and that was the end of that. No, it's every single generation, we say in the Passover meal, there are limitations on freedom. And we also say, let all who are hungry come and eat. So it's a, what it means is we turn our desire for freedom into a desire for freedom for all people. I think most people want peace. I want to get your perspective on this, Rabbi, and, and how we get around this disagreement that's going on right now among young people on college campuses. There's a, a wonderful phrase by a, a poet I love, Paul Claudel. He says, for the flight of a single butterfly, an entire sky is needed. Hmm. And the point of that beautiful verse, that beautiful passage in his poem, is that Freedom requires all of us to cooperate and participate in the freedom of all people. And I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say at the top of this, with all the discussions about the long future and two states or one state or how this will all work, beyond all that, the fact is that there are hostages who need to be freed who are spending this Passover enslaved. And that has to be our first concern, to, to get them to freedom. And at the same time, we must also remember that in the Passover meal, this is so important, Bill, yeah. when we come to the plagues which, su which cause suffering in Egypt, we dip out one drop of wine for each of the plagues. Why? The rabbis say, you shouldn't drink that those drops, because those are the drops that we take out of our cup of joy to remember the suffering of the Egyptians. These were the people who enslaved my people. Right. And so we're still taking a drop of wine for each plague out to remember the suffering of the Egyptians. We, are, we have 30 I seconds left, Mark. We have 30 seconds left. Take that for a second, and I know, and, and bring up your old friend Tom Hartman, a Catholic priest. You were the God Squad. You had a message that, yes, we're all different, but we're all the same in many more ways. What you just that said. That was what we, what you just we said, said it was beautiful. We said it for 25 years. We said it on Good Morning America. We said it anywhere people would allow us to speak which was pretty much anywhere at the yeah. time. Yes. And that, that, that was, we know enough about how we're different. We just don't know enough yet about how we're all the same. And it's such a simple message. I thought it was too simple. 
But Tom, who, who brought it up, and may his memory be blessed, and may his soul live in heaven. Yeah. It wasn't simple. It wasn't simple at all. The, uh, but it's a complex issue, and I, I want to say thank you so much for making it clear. Uh, we need this kind of thinking today. Rabbi Mark Gilman, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate uh, coming on our show and uh, wishing you peace and love, sir.